All right, guys, we're back for round two's review of uh, Supercoach 2022. Um, as you can see, we actually got off to a good round. Um, 2,490 final score. Could have been 2,500. Um, <clears throat> you'll see later, I made a mistake. Um, yeah, could have easily been at, at bare minimum 2,500, but I think that was the max score. Huge rank jump. Um, went up. Basically, what was it like twenty nine thousand last week? Uh, straight up to five thousand, which you know, it's nothing amazing, um, but pretty good rank jump. And that's why I was stressing in the last week round one. Your score really doesn't matter all that much. Uh, you just you know want to have your on field set correctly. Uh, use round one and round two as correction trades, and then build on rank from there. Uh, yeah, the, this is still to change heaps. You could be top 1,000 right now, and you could drop to like 29,000 in a couple of weeks, right? It There is a lot that goes into it in early rounds, and a lot of it's luck. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go over the team. This is probably going to be a longer video because it's round two. This one of the most important rounds, apart from like starting you know, prior to round one. So, yeah, there's a lot to go over. This is probably going to be a movie length video. Just, you know, get your popcorn ready. Uh, okay, so starting off, we've got Jack Crisp, who did make his comeback game, and this is why I was stressing you really shouldn't trade him. Um, it was kind of just an awkward game in round one where he was stuck playing midfield, just couldn't get a lot of the ball. Um, a lot of it was steel as well. He was on steel for a lot of uh St Kilda game. This one uh got a lot of it and this score could have been actually higher than it already is. 121 is obviously you take that, that's great. But uh could have been one thirties if he was a bit better disposal. Um had a couple of clangers and just a couple of bad decisions, but yeah it is what it is. Um yeah definitely fine with the crisp pick and that's why you keep him. Ridley, I did not like this game. Um oh I didn't didn't I did like the game uh, for a different reason, but in terms of Ridley's game and Essendon, did not like it at all. Um, Ridley looks like someone that you can't pick right now. Uh, we'll get into it a bit later in trades, but I don't think you can have him in your team right now. The scores are going to fluctuate heaps because he's not he's not playing one exact role, if that makes any sense. He's playing like a utility of roles. And it kind of comes for the matchup. Last week, he was a fair bit of lockdown, but yeah, Laverde was uh, down. It's touch and go for sure, but there were points in this game where Ridley was like the lockdown defender on Danaher. Uh, you know, I didn't like that. And then there were some times where so I, I did see it a fair bit when he was on McCarthy, which I thought, okay, this is a good matchup for Ridley. Um, Probably taller than McCarthy. I don't know McCarthy's actual height, but Ridley should be taller. Should, should open up some intercepts and stuff like that and you know, kick to him. Uh, didn't happen like that. McCarthy would push up to you know wing-ish, maybe a bit closer to the center bounce. Um, and Ridley would follow him all the way up, which means if there's a behind, that's not a kick in. Can't get on the end of like a uh, getting the ball out of defense, like kick to kick play. He. he Ridley's defensive role this year uh, just isn't great. Like him himself is not, I think his kicking's dropped at least in two games, but he's still probably the best kick on the team, especially now that uh got guys like Merritt down. Stringer's back in, but I wasn't too impressed by Stringer. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Ridley is just someone that you can't hold right now. Until there's some really good signs that Essen's going to be uh, kind of restructuring the defense to closer to what it was the last year and a half, two years, I, it's tough because Ridley could still end up being top six, which in that case you're using two trades. You probably want to go, you're probably going to want to bring him back in. And I don't know if he's worth two trades or anyone that you can trade him to is worth the two trades. Uh, we'll get to it when 
going through the trades, of course, but there is one very like obvious guy where if you have an issue in defense say you started uh you just have to slow start i guess whitfield as well but whitfield's a bit of a lower price maybe you can make it up like say you have 100k in the bank you could make it work but there is one obvious guy you go to in defense he's going to be rock solid actually there's two but i would say there's one larger option Short, great game. Uh, this game was so boring I didn't watch. I turned it on every now and then. Um, GWS got smashed everywhere around the ball. On ball, in the forward line, in the defensive line. They couldn't kick straight. Um, the only good thing from this game was Cornelio looked pretty good, um, especially for his price. That was it. Uh, at least on the GWS side. On the Richmond side, uh, Dan Rioli looks like a an option at halfback, which I thought he would be. I just, you know, this team structure, there's no way I could afford him. Um, yeah, I think Rioli, if you need a budget option that can provide a bit of scoring, you know, I think he had one seventeen on the weekend. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, dead there. One eleven he had. It's not bad. Uh, for... 336k you have to look at like prices and break evens and stuff like that but i think that makes him 100k if he can kind of hang around 90 to 110 somewhere in that range i think he should make 100k so if you need a very budget option i guess he's there uh because i definitely wouldn't be getting someone like uh the frio chapman that's his name um, I definitely wouldn't be going to him. I didn't like anything I saw from him. But yeah, short. Uh, last week was a bit of an anomaly. Couldn't get much of the ball. Only 10 touches outside kick-ins. Uh, this year, this week, uh, heaps of kick-ins. GWS, obviously an inaccurate team. Heaps of kick-ins, heaps of touches outside of that. Played on everything, so yeah, you get a bit more super coach points. Uh, got on the end of a lot of like uh, kick-to-kick chains and like hand-pass chains chains uh so yeah all around good performance could have been a bit higher as well um just, there was a couple of high scoring players so obviously scaling brought them down whitfield um like i said i was just switching this game on and off because this was so boring um or maybe i was just burnt out after you know a weekend of footy whitfield 70 not looking good uh, he looks a little injured, honestly. I don't know if that's injured, like, because he was hunched. There was a couple of stoppages where, like, uh, it was early third quarter. He was, like, hunched over. Um, it, it either looked like, you know, he's maybe had the wind uh, like hit out of him. But, I don't know, this, apparently this was also happening last week in the Sydney game. I didn't, like, wear... How Whitfield was attacking stoppages, I just didn't see that, like, uh, not necessarily aggression, but, uh, like, that want for the ball and the want to kind of move the ball out of defence. Um, yeah, just didn't really see it, honestly. Uh, he could still come good, and... Yeah, he, what's his break-in? It's going to be high as 151. But minus 34k, 70 is going to be in the system for couple of weeks he could he could drop a fair bit honestly he could drop to at least like 450k who's he got this week gold coast i guess gold coast is a good team for him uh well we had like 150 versus gold coast so maybe whitfield can do a bit better than that different roles but uh, defense defense is defense yeah not too sure on whitfield um I have seen reports and just people, you know, other YouTubers that, that have picked him saying, yeah, he's the fittest he's ever been. Uh, just didn't look it, you know. I'm not, not certain it's an injury he's carrying. I think it is just a bit of like, season's just started, there's less preseason games, maybe it's just his tank's not there. And even saying that, I think he had a pretty good time on ground percentage. Can I see that on here? I don't think that's uh, that's a thing on here. Or we're just not going to load up. 
Yeah, I think his time on ground wasn't too bad. I wish you could see it on here, man. Why are these stats so bad? I don't know, it, Whitfield's an interesting one. Because you could definitely trade him, but who do you trade him to? There's n the one pick here I do like, which, you know, there's a bit of talk around, not, not a massive amount, is uh, Doherty. Doherty's looked really good through two games. I'm not saying that because Supercoach score. I'm saying that he's just he's looked good. Good defender, uh, getting a lot of the ball. It's just a matter of will he keep that up when Carlton's not, you know, Carlton's on a tear right now. Got to see if he can keep that up in a bad Carlton game, which I went to the game on Thursday, and that game was really good. It's a pro like, watching Carlton live, they actually play like the dogs, which is interesting. Trips is just insane this year. Hewitt going on the Carlton game. Hewitt got heaps of the ball, man. Like, 117 is low. Like, Cripps took all the points in the 160. Then McRae had 142. Uh, so that were really just all the points gone. Cripps looked great. Um, I think not having, not having him is going to burn me, at least for the first couple of rounds, until maybe he cools off. And maybe, hopefully. Um, if not, then I might have to move Heaven and Earth to get him. Because he, it, the way he was attacking stoppages, that was crazy. Like, he'd just barge in there. Like, there was no one on that team that could tackle him on the Dogs team. And the Dogs team's not even that bad for tackling. Like, uh, they're not amazing, but Lib is not bad. Bond defensively is a little underrated. They did have Dunkley tagging him for a little bit, which I thought was not the play. Um, but it is what it is. It just gave Krebs more contested touches. But yeah, back onto Hewitt. Um he's pretty effective. Like his kick is good, but he likes to handball a bit more. Maybe it was just last game. Um, but yeah, this is an option that you gotta have. If you have Whitfield right now. And the rest of your teams, they sort of fine. Uh, I would definitely advocate a Whitfield to Hewitt trade. Definitely, definitely advocate for that. Even Ridley to Hewitt, maybe. Uh, you would probably want to go Ridley to another, like, proven premium. <clears throat> but Hewitt, Hewitt looks like he's top six material. And he's got a uh, switch DPP, so it helps in trades, and especially in the buy rounds. Hinge looked good. Um, there were stretches where I <clears throat> there were stretches where I didn't like his game. Uh, kind of a bit too aggressive. Like he'd take on a tackler, and you could see he had no chance. He's just not that type of guy. So overall, good game, but this he still left a bit to be desired. Honestly, um, eighty four is obviously a good score. In Adelaide team that just sucks. Like they they don't <laughs> they don't suck suck. Like they they were definitely worse last year and they're better. But um Yeah, they're still not good. They're still gonna get thrashed most more times than not. Uh Gibkiss looked really bad from my view. Um obviously we knew that his scoring just wasn't gonna be great. We knew that uh he's a Back that plays like key back, um, it's not great, but there is one trade for him, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it because there is cash gen there, and cash gen is the most important thing right now. Like this super coach, you will probably get into it a bit later, is really tough for cash gen this year. Like, I can see this being a real issue everywhere outside the forward line. Cash is going to be an issue, even in the midfield where you have like these two studs. Um, not going to play. Scores just don't look great. Um, his role was good last game, but wait and see on him. It's only been two rounds. Connor McDonald plays pretty bad half forward role. Um, Jack Hayes could get dropped for Ryder. Martin plays wing, so that's on and off scores. And once Langford comes back in, you know, say, four or five weeks, he'll be swapped. 
Australia small forward, uh, inconsistent scores, nation consistent scores. So Cash Gen's going to be tough this year. So I don't know if I'd advocate trading out Gibkus, but there is one guy that I'm missing, and I'm thinking that he just is better than Gibkus all around. So we'll have a look. And Gibkus won't, his price rise won't go crazy. Only negative four. Um, yeah, and De Koning, concussion, he'll be back next week. Hopefully his scores aren't bad. Like, 38 was pretty bad, even though he was injured, I guess. I can't remember when the injury happened, if it was early. Um, McCray, 142. I, the logic behind not vicing him, and I'm so happy I did, I didn't um, vice captain him, because I would have definitely taken 142, was Dunkley had a 173 last time. And I think time before that, it was again like a 95 or something like that against uh, Carlton. You want, at least in your vice captain, when you... I knew that Neil was going to go big. Well, I didn't know. Obviously, no one knows. But, uh, you know, you, you look at the stats and the stats say he's scored, he's scored 150 versus Essendon last three times he's versed them. So, you... you Really do want to have a vice captain or a captain on him. You know, could have gone vice Neil, uh, captain talk, and then um, used Owens as a loop, but you know, just didn't want to go through all that. So I knew that I was going to either get a captain score here or an easy skip score. So that, that was good on Dunkley. Like, if this was 140, then that's tough because you can't not take it, honestly. Like, if you took McRae, it is what it is. You can't not take this. Um, McCree, obviously, great. Um, finds heaps of the ball. He actually could go up in price. Um, 134 is definitely something he could get. Uh, Sydney game is probably a bit tough, but it's definitely something he could get. I uh, wouldn't put it past him. He is like Mr. 130. Um, yeah, there's... <laughs> McCray has just been a super coach centerpiece for so long now. It feels like since I started playing, McCray's been M1 or M2. This is insane. The level of consistency he has in like getting 30 touches a game, uh, staying at super efficient. His kicking style is weird. Like it, it kind of reminds me of like a rugby kicking style, but uh, it it obviously works for him. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, Tuke played obviously good. He, you know, The whole Gold Coast team was kind of running on empty the whole fourth quarter. So scores did peter off a bit, and we'll get to the other one in a minute. Uh, there was a lot in row, but we'll get there. Uh, Tuke just does everything good. Like, he has to be a Brownlow contender. The only problem is uh, he could lose a couple of three vote games just because Gold Coast might not keep the game competitive. Like the the Melbourne game was competitive for a while, and it's kind of something that you know Gold Coast shouldn't be too upset about losing because you you did take the reigning premiers. It, it was a competition for about two and a half three quarters. Uh, then the fourth quarter was just a you know run away. Tuke was on set, uh, on target for like, uh, I think it was like 150 and most amount of disposals in like Gold Coast history. So in the first quarter, he tied their record for most disposals in a quarter while spending six minutes on the bench. That's insane. Yeah. Like he's so good at finding the ball and, you know, doing the right thing with it. Then we've got the man of the hour, Lachlan Neal. What a absolute performance this guy put on. Um, great to watch. Uh, you know, I often, you know, mock him for looking like a hobbit but and a goblin, but he's so good. Um, he's definitely back in brown low form. If he just keep stays healthy, obviously, uh, he had a calf injury last year, so I don't know if that's going to flare up, but it could. Just don't really want to see that, honestly. He's a very entertaining player to watch. You want to keep that up. Um, I know Brisbane fans were happy about the game, so yeah, it, 
all around, this was a great performance for Brisbane. Um, Neil just attacking the ball, getting heaps of it. Uh, I think he had something like 30, 40 touches. I think he had 41. Uh, that's just off the top of my head. But, yeah, just, just good all around. I had to check that for a minute. Uh, the number I didn't see. Uh, yeah. Like, he's going to be a captain option pretty much every week. Who they got this week? Brisbane North. Man, he could captain him again. I mean, we go. Hmm. I don't mind Duke into Neil. That's not terrible. I actually might do that. Uh, Duke into Neil. Put it on Neil. Uh, obviously, McRae's good. Um, Petrarca, if you got him, is good. No one in that game. Josh Kelly, perhaps, but I wouldn't. And that's about it. So, yeah, Duke into Neil. Rail, uh, this game, Rail's first quarter was amazing. Like, I think it was on like 44 or 47, something like that. He only scored 30 for the rest of the game. Uh, first quarter was great. Start of the second was good. And then kind of leading into halftime and then after half, they just decided, all right, Rail, you're now, like, he was soft tagging. And it was so bad. Just see, like, he's not a defensive midfielder like that. He's not Jack Steele. Uh, Jack Steele can tag, obviously. He's done it for years. Rail cannot do that. At least right now, he hasn't got the tank for it. And following, following uh, Oliver and Petrarca around, just completely depleted his tank. We saw it a bit last week against West Coast. He just hasn't got many games under his belt. So once he gets to the fourth, with a limited interchange, he just, you know, he can't run out 100%, you know, every game. So this is obviously a keep. Like, obviously, you do not even let the thought enter your mind about trading him. He was obviously good. He had 40 in the first. Uh, he had something like 11, 12 touches in the first. Obviously played great, but... No, uh, Stuart do. Just makes so many interesting choices. If he keeps rail as like this soft tagger, it not a hard tag. Like people are saying, oh my god, he's a complete tagger now. Right? Like, that's that's not true. Uh, he was following him around and just kind of staying on him. It was taking really just defensive duties. It was a soft tag. Um, Barry put on a bit of a hard tag and it really helped his score. But um, you just if Do keeps this up, he could be out of a job for the end of the season. Um, it's just not good, <laughs> not at all. It really made the game like way easier for Melbourne, honestly, because it it took all the energy out of the mids, and that's what Gold Coast were using to like stay even. Was just, we're young, so we've got energy, and it, it, he completely killed it all. Um, Barry seventy six, like I said before, this score was just not looking good for a while. Um, if you have no other like huge issues in your team, like my team for the most part is uh, all right. Like there's no uh super big issue. Um, you know I said Ridley and Whitfield, but even then you can hold them. So are likely to be in the top six, the top eight defenders. Um, if you have no other options, you can trade Barry here. Uh, the game just wasn't played on his terms and he just doesn't seem like the person that's going to attack the ball tag and merit forced him to get closer to the ball where in normal circumstances he wouldn't it was this was a like i said before a hard tag where he was just following stop stoppage to stoppage kind of trying to push him out of every uh contest uh it it Helped Barry more than it, yeah. You know, like if he stayed as a full time tagger, maybe you could take the score. But even then, like that's just not a good role. Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon you could trade Barry, and I'm gonna have a look at it this week. See if I have to. I think I might have to just for money purposes, and I think that his cash gen isn't worth holding on for a you know what could 
end up being a bad game. Like this week will be fine against North. He'll be fine. Uh, if Nash scored 90, then Barry should be able to score 80 plus. Uh, and they played basically the same role. So what's the next round? Round four. Brisbane. Geelong. Yeah, see, this is going to be a bad game for him. Ah, man. You, maybe you do. Hollywood, not bad for him, but not great either. Um, Hollywood probably like to keep it a contested game. Yeah, you could trade Barry. Um, there's better cash making options here. And the rookies, Horn Francis was good. Um, North just didn't look great, honestly. <laughs> like, they won, and they won by a little bit, but it was against a waffle team. And I watched this game, obviously, as a West Coast supporter, I watched the game. West Coast looked way more impressive than North did. It wasn't even, like, even North fans will admit West Coast were the more impressive team on the day. I've seen that on social media and stuff like that, and they will admit it, that West Coast played better on the day. They just didn't win. Uh, in large part because Jack Darling is just a bad AFL player at this point, drops everything, and uh, can't kick from right in front. Um, yeah, the, the game was so winnable if Jack Darling knew how to kick a ball and catch a ball. But Horn Francis was good. Um, very, he, he took a couple of contest touches that uh, didn't think he'd be going for early in the career, but yeah, he is, so pretty cool. Uh, this score is obviously going to fluctuate a bit. Last week it was like 75, wasn't it? I, I want to say. Yeah, 75. Um, it, there, there is going to be a bit of fluctuation here just because he's playing a, like, two roles, like he switches into the midfield, he's not a full-time midfielder. He might be later in his career, uh, once North kind of open up the midfield for him. I think Greenwood was actually a bad signing for him, but it is what it is. It's because it takes more mid-minutes away. Um, Dacos had a lot of the ball, just didn't use it great, so this is, he should have a bounce back this week. Actually, it's Geelong, so maybe not. If he keeps up his high possession count, this is He's fine. Um, he's obviously got a good role. He's like playing half back and then switches into the midfield. Good role for a rookie at least. Uh, Mitch Owens ended up keeping. This was almost the guy I went to for Jack Hayes, but then I saw Baldwin was out and I thought uh, maybe Baldwin doesn't make it back. Uh, I guess Baldwin could. He kicked three goals in the VFL and had like 20 touches. So perhaps he comes back. Not too sure. But either way, I prefer Hayes over Baldwin. I think Hayes just gets more games. Uh, and yeah, he gave me Stevens 95. Uh, I was just going to loop between the three of them, and that's why I'm keeping him. Um, I don't actually think there's a need to trade Owens for a while uh, until he either comes back in the team and you don't want him <laughs> because... He's probably going to play 50% time on ground again. You don't really want any part of that. Um, but yeah, for I think it's the next three weeks you can loop him, Ward, and Stevens, like just you know get the best score. So that's what I'm going to keep doing because I haven't got a uh, M8 I really like. The Rocks, not not a, Grundy was more impressive last week, and uh, Gorn just. Not great. Uh, had a lot of dropped marks this week, and he looked tired by the end of the game. Like really tired. He was kind of just walking around the field and resting very good up forward. Uh, and Luke Jackson was really good. So I don't know what that means for the future of Gorn. Obviously, he's a super safe pick. Um, his ownership's going to be crazy high. Uh, I don't know what that means for the future, though. If that game was kind of like Luke Jackson's coming out game, where he's going to get a lot more rough time because he's super athletic. And uh, Gorn kind of just moves into a back slash forward role. Like, like on a smaller level of what Goldstein's doing now, where... Someone else is really the main rock. I think that's more next year. I think next year you don't want to pick Gorn. Um, I think Luke Jackson will be 
move it into being the main ruck next year. Grundy just yeah wasn't anything crazy, honestly. Like uh, just he didn't he didn't get like beaten hit like super easily by uh Rob, but just wasn't a great game. Yeah, wasn't great. It's not a very ruck oriented game. Dixon missed with health and safety. Hopefully he's back this week. Um, but if he's not, it's actually not too bad because you can then loop for the best score here in the uh, forward line. So it's not not actually too bad if he misses again. Which he could because I don't know if they're going to play Darling, Kennedy, Nick Nat, and Dixon. It's playing a lot of tools. So we'll see. If he uses the loop, that's, that's fine. West Coast will play heaps of Sunday games, so... He is a good loop option. Uh, the forward line was pretty good all around. Some some good scores and like good um, games. Dunkley played good. Could have had two goals at the end. Um, they they weren't the easiest kicks. So I'll give them to him, but he, he could have kicked them. I don't think they were unkickable by his standards. And if he kicks them, probably jumps up to about a one twenty game. Uh, it, it is what it is because it would have tied the game. So. Uh, Butters, not gonna lie, didn't watch the game. Porter just really boring to watch. <clears throat> they always have been, honestly. Porter just not a very entertaining team. They win, but just not very entertaining. Um, he had a career high eleven tackles, so that obviously carried his score. But even then, he scores one twenty a game. You take that; it's fine. Um, Canelio, from what I saw, he he looked a little bit like old Canelio, not. Yeah, he still butchers the ball heaps, but you come to expect that. I think he had two goals. Um, I saw one, and I think he had another one later. Um, the, the issue here is just Leon Cameron's a bad coach. That's the that's the main issue here. And Tom Green is looking like a pretty good midfielder, so I don't know what that means for Colts. Um, it's it's a wait and see thing. Cherry. Probably the highlight of the forward line for the round, even though Butters looked great. Um, we knew Butters was going to be good. Cherry, solidified spot as number one ruck. Um, he'll get ruck DPP in round six, round seven, whenever they said they were going to do it. And it's, it's good, honestly. Like, if you had to trade corn in round six, which I wouldn't, I think he'd drop too much to make a profit. Uh, let's see. Someone gets hurt. You can run him there or in buys even. Um, yeah, he, this looked good all around. Um, he did drop a couple, but Gorn drop, drops a couple, so I'm not too mad about that. Nash, uh, one of the better players on ground for West Coast. I'd say he's in like the top five. You have probably like a Ryan, Rioli, McGovern. Um, no, probably niche there. Uh, I like Aaron Black. Um, yeah, niche just played really good. Oh, he had ninety three or ninety four percent time on ground. I'd like to see him get less time on ground and play a bit closer to on ball. Um, he plays wing a bit too much. I'd like to see him come in a little bit. Uh, the only issue with that is he's kind of got a small frame. So, could get like just pushed around a stoppage. That's, but, like that is the reason why he plays wing. Uh, it, it, good game though. Plays good role. Um, but not it's not a good role, but like it's a good role for West Coast. It's the same reason why Gaff's been like just a, a solid option. Like obviously not someone they want to bring in, but uh, like a solid hundred average for the last couple of years. It's just. Wing at West Coast is a good role because of how much they switch it, um, you know, around the back line and around the mid line. So yeah, Nash, not bad. Um, I was kind of hoping for a bad game, honestly, because uh, I needed to trade someone, yeah, uh, for like a potentially Brody, but looks like I haven't got an option for that now. So it is what it is. Rochelle, gonna take that. He's small forward. He's not gonna score huge every game. Um, you, you just got to expect that, honestly. 
Um, should bounce back this week. I think they've got the uh, Adelaide showdown. Yeah. Usually the, the young kids do put on a bit of performance in the um, Adelaide showdown. I think Butters had a good performance last year or the year before. Uh, was it? I think it was Rowe had a good performance. I think he had like three goals. So it is a game where kind of the young kids show up. Uh, and then the bench, Nick Martin didn't play with COVID. Easy come back in. Like, Essendon do kind of need him on the wing. Um, Francis, they brought in. They brought him in as a forward, but just didn't work out. So, Langford's still out. Ham just didn't look great. Um, I always thought it was Dur Durham or whatever, but it's Durham, something like that. So, he didn't look great either. So, Martin should just slide back in. And his scoring looks. It looked all right. Like, he had five goals, but even then, like, he was hovering around 60, 70. So, you take that. Like, if this is the guy that you're going to constantly have, like, looped for on field, you take 60, 70 for him. At 102k, you, you take that. And then Hayes, uh, a good game. Uh, 68 was a little low. He was a bit higher <clears throat> early on. I think I saw him at, like, 48, and he was, like, leading St. Kilda. So. Not great that he only had 20 for the rest of the game from that point, but um, the issue here is Ryder had a good game in the VFL. Uh, I think he had 20-something touches, a goal. Um, man, I, I, Paddy Ryder really shouldn't be coming back right now. Hayes is playing good, and he's, I wouldn't say he's a cult figure. He's played two games, but like the, uh, the mullet, people like it. He's a high energy player. I think you just keep him and you rotate Hayes for whenever someone gets hurt. Um, not rotate uh, Ryder for when someone gets hurt because Ryder himself isn't very durable at this point in his career. Yeah, uh, man, but they they really could drop him. Uh, I wouldn't put that past uh, Brett Rutten. Rutten. Rutten and Ratten. Ratten is the Essendon guy. Uh, they're playing dudes. They're both bad coaches, honestly. Um, yeah, it is what it is. You, even if he gets dropped, you keep him on cash gen. You just put him in the ruck line. You use him as like a sometimes play in ruck three. Um, he, his cash gen's obviously going to be good. What's his break even? It's 135, so he's going to go up heaps. But yeah, going into like um, trades and stuff, I did kind of go on like players that you, you need to trade. Um, let's go through, through here because you'll, you'll see like more players. Uh, Neil, obviously, if you haven't got him, you, you have to get him. Like, you do have to move heaven and earth to get him. I don't know if that means dropping steel, I don't know if that means dropping. Uh, I think Titch had a bit of ownership. You've got to drop him. Like I think his break even is the highest. Uh, yeah, the highest. Yeah, Tom Mitchell. You have to trade him. You can't keep that. Uh, Zorko. I don't think anyone started him, but uh, I mean he he could actually get defensive DPP, which would make it interesting. But yeah, I think uh, you got to trade him. Got to trade him. Steel, I think he's tradable, but you'd prefer to hold him. But if it's four nil, then I'd I'd say that's fine. Uh, Lions, I don't think anyone should have started him, but if you did, definitely hop off. Darcy got injured. Wait and see the lineups because Darcy is the type of guy that just comes back. Uh. But if he if he's out this week, you definitely got to go to someone else. I do like English for Darcy. Uh, Bont definitely hop off. Um, just he's he's playing with an injury. That's that's for certain. Um, he was, from what I saw, there were long periods of the game where he just move off the ball, like whether it's forward line, you know, just not really going in for stoppages and stuff like that. Uh, you definitely got to hop off Bond, at least for the first couple of weeks. Walsh, 
everyone obviously traded him out when he got injured. Aaron Thomas, <laughs> he popped a kick to the ribs, and I think he either fractured a rib or broke a rib. So I don't know what recovery time looks like on that, but for now, I'd probably trade him out and bring him in. He'll probably drop to 400k, so I'd probably bring him in then. Uh, Clayton Heap, uh, that's, that's obviously not a trade. Parrish Heap, because Maris out now for two months, and uh, Parrish is going to just hog all the touches now. Uh, maybe if you could manufacture Ridley to Neil. I don't know how you'd do that. Maybe you had uh, Hewitt in the midfield. But if you can do that, definitely do it. <laughs> um, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, there's a couple of guys here that you just have to trade out. Merritt is injured now. You've got to trade him out. It's two months. You can't hold that. Uh, Lloyd, 133 is not even bad for him. So you keep him if you hold him. Uh, who else is here? Mills played pretty good, honestly. I liked what I saw there. Uh, Dawson, keep him. Uh, he had a bad first quarter, like really bad. I think it was on negative three or zero. Um, yeah, uh, the next three quarters, he put in like a really good performance. Kicks just super accurate. Uh, good motion to him as well. Uh, yeah, so keep Dawson. Don't even think about trading him because you're, you're going to bring him back later. So it's not worth two trades. Marshall, keep him. There's just not many great ruck options. Uh, and then we're going into kind of nobodies here. So, yeah, that's just a quick rundown on guys that you probably should be trading. And uh, obviously, guys you trade in, just anyone from this list. If you haven't got Hayes, bring him in. If you haven't got Sherry, bring him in. Uh, do not get Ginnivan. Um First of all, his game sucks to watch. It is just not football friendly like not super coach talking about football he ducks for everything the afl really should tell him like dude stop because now we're going to have to change the rules and the way afl does something it's either like the rules are on this side where it's super safe or the rules are on this side where it's dangerous for players there's no middle it's never been a middle ground in afl rules look at holding the ball in the back it's just so messed up so if they change the rules for him it's actually going to be really dangerous for players it's like he's ducking all of these like he had four frees and none of them he was deserved like he didn't deserve any of them <laughs> he ducked for all of them but worse than joel selwood honestly uh the, in the back like he was you know a feather landed on him and he'd go down really bad honestly um someone should give him a talk and say dude don't do it he's going to ruin the game for a lot of people uh there'll be a lot more concussions and stuff then just, uh, yeah, not great. And I wouldn't bring him in because he's a forward and his scoring relies on goals. Not worth it. Um, especially when, like, Rochelle is cheaper and probably a better goal threat, better all-around player. Uh, McCartan is who I'm looking to bring in this week. Uh, just, he had, like, five or six intercepts in the first quarter. He showed that, like, He's a real defender this year, like a real option. So at least for cash in, I, if you're like me and you didn't start him, I started Nash over him, which turned out to be a bad decision, I think, all in all. But um, yeah, McCartan's good. Bowie, this is going to be a topic of conversation this week. Uh, should you bring in Bowie? I think the only situation you bring in Bowie is if you've got McGovern and you can make the switch or... Like, say you put Baconing in the forward line. Or you have Chapman and you have, like, say, I think it's like 20k you need to get Chapman or Bowie. Um, but besides that, I wouldn't bring him in, honestly. Because he, I think, to make 150k, he has to average 85 plus. I'm not, I saw that a couple of days ago. I'm not too sure now. But I think the average to to go up 150k, you know, puts him at like 400k mark. Um, he has to average like high 80s, and he has got Salem's role, which 
Salem's been a pretty good super coach scorer for the last couple of years. Not top six, but you know, solid. I don't know if Bowie has that. The 151 is good for his uh pass gen. And I think if he averages like 70 from oh, six, 73, I think was the number he needs to average. If he averages that from here, he goes up 100k for free. Uh, just with the 150 in his rolling average. So, this is definitely a wait and see. Like, even, like, for me, I don't have an option to him. I haven't got McGovern. Uh, I haven't got, uh, who has to say, Chapman. And I'm not going to trade, like, Ridley to him. That would be stupid. Um, you he say he gets his first price rise and he still looks good. Say he puts up at one thirty or something this week, then uh, maybe Whitfield to him's not the worst. If Whitfield just isn't looking good, wait and see though. Uh, I think that that's the two options you got. If you got McGovern, you go to him. If you haven't, uh, and you got Chapman, you can go to him. But even then, I think Brody is a better option for McGovern. Um. A Brew McCreary, you don't even think about like is worse than Ginevan. So, um, Brody just struggles to stay on field. Like, he's he played 12 minutes of the fourth, just not good. Um, maybe that gets better, maybe it gets worse. You know, maybe he just gets tired mid season. Uh, they have got the uh West Coast Frio derby this week, so. Maybe there's a bit there. Uh, should I think five cent until round six? I don't know if I made that up or if I'm dreaming, but um, I think round six is what I heard. I uh, actually, I I actually don't know if I was dreaming that uh, I've read that article. But yeah, Brody's a good option, uh, and I think it's like a one k switch for him and McGovern, so pretty easy to get to. Nash, I wouldn't be bringing him in. Uh, if you wanted him, you had to have started him. I think 189k for a wing just isn't a good pickup. Uh, I mean, okay, so what are up common ones? So forward, one, two, three. I'm not going to, people have in defense. Four, five. Yeah, people probably don't have Nash, and I wouldn't bring him in. I started him because I got West Coast bias. Um, but if I was thinking straight, I wouldn't have started him. I would have started uh, Carton over him and taken the extra, like, 30k. It, it, all around, it was a bad decision. It was just the West Coast bias hit me, and I was like, oh, Nash could be really good. He could move inside. Obviously, he couldn't. His frame is tiny. He's built like a stick figure. He just has a really good tank and runs out games. And he's an all right kick of the ball. When he's not bombing it, it's fine. Um, Davies, don't hop on, he's playing small forward. Newcomb didn't really back up his performance. He had 61 this week, just didn't really back it up, 68. Um, th there is still, like, good signs from him. Uh, again, I didn't watch the game, man. No way am I watching a poor Thorn and Port game. No way. Um... I think the game was on the same time as Gold Coast game. Why, why wouldn't I watch Ralph? He's like one of my favorite players and uh, Petrarca. But yeah, Newcomb still could come, come good. It's just a matter of now he's going to get his price rise. It'll be 300k. Now, I don't know if you want to take that risk there. Uh, Crips. All right, so we see it on the side here. A lot of people going Whitfield to Crips. That's, that's a fine trade. If you think Whitfield's not going to come good. Um, and if you think Cripps is a keeper. If you think Cripps is a money maker. Don't bring him in. Uh, he's not worth it. 450k. He has to do a lot to make. Like 150k. That puts him to 600. He has to do a lot. Um, if you're bringing him in. He's a keeper. So. That's that's what you got to weigh up with that. Do you think Cripps is a keeper player? If you think yes. Then obviously trade him in. Trade him for, like, uh, Ripley if you think he's a keeper. Trade him for anyone. You got Steel for Crips. Um, 
I don't know if this is a good trade because Steele is 100% a keeper. Like, he will be a top eight mid, probably top five. You know, like, he has been, I think, the last two years since the, the bubble year. So, uh, even though he's, like, St. Kilda just aren't playing great right now, they have got a couple injuries, so he should still come good. And he's a tackling machine, so no matter what the midfield is, he's going to get points from tackles. And that's some of the most points a midfielder can get besides a goal. Uh, Heaney, you do want. Heaney's going to... Heaney's an issue for me because I started an extra defender, which ended up being Ripley, to drop Heaney, which does not play. But that's hindsight. You know, the the thought process behind Ridley really wasn't that bad. Like, it's not something that you can say is an error because Laverde came in. Uh, well, Laverde didn't come in, but Laverde's there. Uh, Jake Kelly, you're like, all right, they're going to take the lockdown position, and it leaves Ridley to be, like, loose man, uh, takes intercepts, good kick, um, takes the kick-ins and stuff like that, and it just hasn't worked out that way. Um. He's taken, I still think, majority of the kick-ins, but they are getting shared, which isn't great. I think there's like five players that take one kick in a game, <laughs> that take at least one a game. It's just not what you want to see. If you've got one of those backs that rely on kick-ins, that say short relies on kick-ins. Um, Hinge, sure, if you haven't got him, but I think he's like one of the highest ownership players. Rail, yes, you've got to get him in. Just looking too good. Uh, Canelio, I think everyone started him. I think he's got like the highest ownership in all oh, super coach. Coldwell, this is an interesting one, and I'll get to it because I think I'm going to be trading him in this week, maybe. Um, yeah, he with Merritt out, it opens up a lot more midfield time for him, and with the not limited, he's getting a fair bit of midfield time. He's looking really good so far, like. 90, I think it was 90 and a 91 he's put up, a uh, solid 20 touches per game, uh, good by foot, good, like, uh, tank is not dropping in a uh, time on ground like heaps. Uh, this is a guy that could make 150k, that puts him, again, 400k, but he averages in the 85, 90 range. It's definitely possible, you know, there's, there's, Worse players that uh, average less in a 400k. Uh, Tom Green, I wouldn't be bringing him in. Uh, 430k versus Crips 436. 450. Uh, I guess 20k. I think you're just fine training 20k and get to Crips, uh, in my opinion. Um, McGinnis, probably going to get dropped. Foley, another one you kind of had to start. Even then, I, I think the fault in pick and Foley, and I wouldn't say it's like a huge fault because you couldn't see it coming, uh, was Witherden taking his minutes. Like, not not say his minutes, but like his role. At least last game, what I saw was uh, Foley's role in round one was, say, Hearn would kick into him and Foley would move it forward. Or Foley would kick it to Hearn, Hearn would move it forward. This week, Witherden was just a substitute for that. Obviously a bad substitute. He was probably the best kick for North all game. But, uh, yeah, it, Foley's role this week was a lot different to what it was the week before. So I, I don't know. I couldn't advise this pick, um, especially when you got Bowie, who's basically a guaranteed 100K price maker. Um, yeah, I just I can't advise that pick. If he gets the role he had in round one, then he, it's not too bad because he could average 90 from there. Meek, obviously no. Mountford probably won't get another game, even though I think that all the uh, pop-up players look really good, honestly. Like, Aaron Black deserves a contract. Um, there was a guy in defense. I think the Eagles do have his rights. Uh, Jameson. He had a couple of just... Bad mistakes, but he is. This is. They had eight players playing their first West Coast game, and four players playing their first AFL game. So yeah, there was a lot going on. 
Uh, there was one really bad mistake he made, and then Hearn got around him, which I thought was like one of the best captaincy moments for a player, even though Hearn's not the captain, which is surprising. Where is he now? I can't remember now. Yeah, he is, isn't he? It's him or McGovern, one of the two, or it should be. Um, Heaney. Heaney's an interesting one because I don't know who you trade to get him in. If you have. So you, again, Whitfield is going to be the, the way to get to a lot of these players. So you're Whitfield out. So you've got De Koning here. You can switch De Koning and get to him. For me, there's no way to get to Heaney. Right now, at least. Unless. I do something crazy like uh, Whitfield out, Dixon out, move Hayes to Ruck 3, um, bring in a, anyone there, and uh, oh no, I need a defender. I, I don't know. I don't think that's actually possible. I'd have to trade boost for it. I know that. Um, but yeah, going into my trades for this week, we kind of talked a bit in, about everyone. I'm looking at trading Ridley. I just want to get to Hall. So there is, I think, 20k I have to make up. Or is it 10k? Yeah, 10k I have to make up. And to do that, I was looking at Barry out. Um, he's really just the only expendable player I've got. Gibkiss is as well. Um, just want to have a look at this, see if this works. Gibkiss, same carton. I did want to get McCartan this week. This just stops him from having to use a trade boost to get rid of Barry. Because I, I do like the upside of Coldwell right now. I don't know why it freezes when I do trades. Um, so, so we go McCartan. Uh, he's double C, isn't he? That does go through. Um, which is interesting. I don't know if I want to do this straight up. Um, I think for now, I'm just going to put it in. I don't want to spend forever on this. But yeah, this is, for now, uh, I just didn't like Ridley's game on the weekend. Uh, I guess I could loop. No, I can't, because the coning will come back, so I can't loop that. Uh, I trust Hinge a bit more in the uh, Adelaide game. Yeah, Hall is... Really likely to be D1 again this year. He just plays such a super coach game, honest. Like, if he wasn't injured, everyone would have him. Like, everyone would have him. It's just he's 31 and he had that hammy issue, it was a calf issue. You can't pick a guy like that unless you've got like certainty on him, which I guess he. Didn't play round one. Oh, uh, he did play round one. So there was a bit of call for like, you know, if he's playing, you should have picked him. But yeah, you know, age and durability are the main concerns here. I think he'll be fine. I think he plays so uncontested. It, it would take a. It has to be a soft tissue injury, and you can't bank on them. Like you can't say one's going to happen. You, you just don't know. Um. Yeah, I, I like Hall more than I like Ridley, a lot more. So I don't think it's a bad trade. It's just, do I want to trade boost to get rid of Barry? I think Barry will go up in price. I just think Coldwell is the better option right now. Like, um, By the way, trade boost in this round isn't actually a bad idea. Uh, it's probably going to be the most common round to do it here in the buy rounds. Uh, if you didn't make two trades last week, you're still going to be above 30 trades. So, like, say I just activate it now, and I'll do it here. I'll probably deactivate it later. I'll just go Barry to Coldwell. I'm still at 31 trades. That's more than 30, and it's more than I need. Um, oh, I say more than I need. I probably just jinx myself. I'm going to have 100 COVID out. Um... But, you know, you can't bank on COVID either, so. You go, you bring in Coldwell here. I think Brody's also a good shout. Um, it's just the time on ground for me. I, I'm, 
I, I do like players with a bit higher time on ground. I'm just thinking, is, uh, is Whitfield an option? I think the other trade I had in my mind was named Ridley to Hall, Whitfield to Doherty, and then uh, Barry to Brody. It's just Brody's time on ground. I, his score is really good in the time he's on ground. He's probably got the best like points to minute ratio. Um, but yeah, it's just it's a bit tough. I think for now I'll just undo it. I'll do it later in the week. Have a look at lineups and everything. But McCartan is probably coming for Gibkus at the bare minimum. Even if like I keep everyone, I'm probably going to go Gibkus to McCartan. You have to beat that because I don't want to act of, accidentally take it. Um, but yeah, kind of went over everything this week. Um, just trying to think, is there anything I missed? I don't think so. Uh, if you made it this far, I mean, good on you. It's an hour long video. It's going to be a pain in the ass to edit and upload. Um, but yeah, it feel free to let me know what trades you're making this week, what injury. Plays, <laughs> what bad plays you've got, injured players, maybe you've got Darcy. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll see you all next week. Until then, uh, tasty out.